Hey guys, I'm Hellhound, and uh, I got some books here. <clears throat> As you, uh, you guys probably already know, I'm a huge fan of scary stories, you know, and urban legends. Uh, it's probably, you know, a good campfire tale. It's probably like my fourth favorite thing next to you know, horror films, heavy metal music, and comic books. So um, I think we all like a good scary story. And uh, I've already talked about, <coughs> like, uh, R.L. Stein stuff and uh, you know the scary stories that tell the dark, but I really like uh, the scary story books that are aimed more towards like well not really kids but like younger people because um, I feel like you know the more adult ones are like kind of more you know like gory and kind of more uh, over the top and stuff which which I like in a different way um, but I like you know I like spooky you know creepy atmosphere like a really a really chilling um, you know story not you know. Nobody has to die, you know, nobody has to lose their head or get dismembered or, you know, or anything like that or burned alive or anything like that. That's like a good creepy um, tone, you know, a good uh, eerie, ominous mood. Um, that's what, you know, that's mostly what I what I like. And uh, I feel like uh, Short and Shivery uh, really delivers that. Um, these were, you know, it came in like four volumes. Um, they were a series of books, um, you know, collecting uh, short, scary stories, you know, short stories, which are my favorite. You know, they're, I like ones that, you know, get right to the point. They're short and sweet. And there's no middle. It's just a beginning and an ending. Um, you know, of course, most of them have a twist at the end, which, of course, is a staple of uh, scary stories. That's usually the best part is the, the very end. Um, and so, yeah, there's the first book, uh, Short and Shivery. Um, it was retold, well, you know, it was written by Robert D., Sans Susi, I guess is how you pronounce his name, um, and the illustrations by uh, Catherine Coville, and uh, <clears throat> you know he just retold stories that he'd heard, um, you know, different variations of ones that he heard, you know, around. So chances are, if you read these books, you're gonna run into a scary story you're already familiar with. You've heard like a different version of it somewhere, um, and uh, he Sans Susi does a good job. He can definitely spin a yarn. And after this first book, Short and Shivery. Um, there's also more uh, Short and Shivery, and there is even more Short and Shivery, uh, the third book, and then there is uh, A Terrifying Taste of Short and Shivery, which is the fourth volume. And then there's also one, I think it was called uh, Giant Short and Shivery, and I think it just collected all four books in one. So if you don't already have all these individual books, um, you might want to buy the giant size one, you know, that has all the stories in one. Um, and yeah, Catherine Covo returned to the illustrations as well as uh, Jacqueline Rogers. Um, but I think this fourth one, uh, neither of them are credited, so I'm not really sure who did the drawings here. I notice there aren't quite as many drawings, and they certainly don't look like the same uh, artist that did uh, the previous ones. I there was a really cool one in here of a witch. Um, but you know, I'm not even, there's some owls. I'm not even really all about the illustrations, you know, I, I could do without them. Uh, I know a big part of Scary Stories in the Hill of Dark was uh, Stephen Gamble's drawings, his you know creepy illustrations. That was a huge part of it. Uh, so much so that when they re-released them with new illustrations by uh, Brent Hellquist, who's known as known for um, a series of misfortunate events um, or unfortunate events, whatever it is, uh, <laughs> um, when they released them with him, I noticed that um, a huge part of what made them so appealing was gone. Um, you know, and it's not anything against Alvin Schwartz, the author, but I think the, you know, the drawings are a huge part of what made it so damn creepy and really, uh, uh, hard to believe that they were kids books with some of those, you know, <laughs> some of those drawings were a, a little much, uh, I don't know if it gave several kids nightmares, um, I always loved them, of course, you know, I always ate that stuff up, but, uh, yeah, the drawings in here aren't really as, you know, quite as, quite that scary, of course, uh, they're pretty basic, they're pretty, uh, straightforward. Um, but, you know, as I said, I'm not even really worried about the illustrations. Um, yeah. So, sometimes I'll be describing, like, a really weird creature. Um, and while descriptions are good, sometimes I can't picture it in my mind. And so it's kind of, kind of helps that there's a drawing of it. But, um, but yeah, all these great books, uh, anyway, I'm getting off track. And, uh, but I'm mostly going to talk about the very first volume, just, uh, Short and Shivery, uh, 30 Chilling Tales. Um, <clears throat> you know, everybody loves a spooky story. Um. Yeah, some really great stories in the book. I think it actually starts off kind of, uh, you know, kind of slow, but it gets better as it goes on. Yeah, this is the Robert Bridegroom as a first story. Um, 
It's a pretty good one. And, you know, that continues a recurring theme throughout a lot of these stories is like a villain getting their comeuppance. So somebody does something bad and has anything less than benevolent um, <clears throat> intentions, usually something bad happens to them. Somebody either gets a revenge or, um, you know, something just, you know, they get their just desserts, you know. <laughs> they get what's coming to them. Um, you know, there's one story in here. Uh, it's called The Dancing Skeleton or something. Um, hold on, I'll find it here in a second. Uh, the Skeletons Dance. Yeah, that's about two friends, and, uh, and they're in Japan. And uh, one of the friends kills the other one, and uh, he comes back as a skeleton, you know, and agrees to dance for him and help him make some money, but then, you know, of course, he turns on him and gets his revenge. Um, yeah, I won't give away too many of the endings. I just want to talk about some of my favorite stories. Uh, Scared to Death, that's a good one. Um, but uh, before I talk about my favorite story, um, here's a really cool one about Jack Frost, where an evil stepmother and uh, her mean daughter uh, get their <laughs> get their just desert for mistreating the uh, the um, stepdaughter. Uh, Waterfall Ghost is another good one. Uh, one of one of my favorite things about these stories is like the the setting. Like a lot of them take place in the old days, like you know back in the 1800s and like other you know um, foreign lands, you know such as like Norway and Japan and you know a lot, a lot of sca Scandinavian countries. Um, you know, uh, Spain and South America. It's all, you know, all kinds of cool, um, you know, different uh, locations and different timelines I thought was cool. And it paints a very vivid picture. Um, Robert D. Sansus, he's really good at uh, descriptions. Um, you know, he's really good at painting a, a vivid picture. You know, you can really... Um, and, and that's about some of the creatures in here, like um, one of the earlier stories, uh, the Segua or Sejua or... Sejua, <laughs> it's uh, some Central American uh, creature. Um, I didn't, I didn't. It, it, this, this, this book has introduced me to a lot of uh, um, mythical creatures, you know, uh, such as the Segua, which I just mentioned, um, which is basically like a beautiful woman that on a horse, or no, she lures a, a horse rider um, to give her a ride, and then like you know, he's, she's riding in the back, and eventually she turns into a demonic creature with a, a horse skull for a head, or just a horse head. I think it's even creepier of course. There is the Segua. El Segua. Um, yeah, there's a picture of it. Um, yeah, she lures unsuspecting travelers and then kills them. And sometimes I think it even takes the forms the form of their wives or girlfriends. And I think it's usually when they're bad people anyway, so it's like they kind of deserve it. And another um, interesting creature that this book introduced me to was the Nukalavi. Um, I guess that's how it's pronounced. Or Nukalavi, I don't know. Um... It's a folktale from the Orkney Islands. It's like a creature that usually lurks around, um, <clears throat> like the sea, around oceans. It's it's not a not a sea monster, but it lurks around. Them. And basically, what it is, like, oh, there's some cool drawings. Uh, sorry. Basically, what it is is, um, it looks like a horse with like a a, a man riding it. But it turns out the man riding is actually part of the horse. So it's like you know a horse with a man like coming out of it, and it's skinless. So it's looking like all shiny muscle and veins and blood it's really creepy it has like one glowing red eye so it's really creepy uh see there's a woman sinking into the earth some quicksand she was a mean woman a thief and a liar so she got her come up and saw uh, a great story but yeah the nukalavi like i was talking about it's uh there's no illustration so you have to use your imagination what the creature looks like i looked it up on google images afterwards because i wanted to see like um you know different people's interpretations and pretty gruesome looking creature they should definitely put that in a horror movie um <laughs> but yeah, um, my favorite story in here, um, yeah, I love all the, all the creatures, um, that this book introduced me to. Okay, well, actually, my second favorite story is Scared to Death, and that's like a variation of, you know, the people dare somebody to go in a graveyard at night, and, um, either uh, put like a knife or a sword or a pin or something in the ground, and then uh, they end up, uh, accidentally um sticking their clothing to the ground and they think something's grabbing them and they're trying to run and they die of fright and it turns out it's just a misunderstanding there's nothing supernatural going on that's a variation of that story i'm sure we've all heard i've heard so many different versions of that and uh this is definitely one of the better ones um another one that's kind of similar is the ghost's cab but this chick who's not afraid of anything she's really greedy and dishonest um like a lot of the characters in here are like that and they you know something usually bad happens to them through supernatural means um, yeah, she steals the, the ghost's hat and throws it in the lake and it comes after him. You know, where's my hat? There's another common, uh, you know, 
common ghost story. Uh, you know, where's my hat? Or where's my toe? Or where's my golden arm? You know, they steal something from the dead and it comes back looking for it. Sometimes they've gotten rid of it. They've either eaten it or thrown it out or something. And it comes looking for it. Um, Taily Poe is another one that's like that. Some weird uh, creature that's made from like a bunch of different animals. And um, the guy cooks and eats, eats its tail <laughs> and uh, comes looking for it. So it's kind of like another version of that um, type of story. Uh, there's a picture of that creature in the story, Taily Poe, the creature right there. It'd be creepy looking thing. I know it'd be creeped out if I woke up in my bed and saw that staring at me. Um, but yeah, anyway, my favorite story in here actually doesn't have an illustration, which I'm kind of glad because I like to use my imagination anyway. As I said, I could do without the drawings. Um, they're cool, you know, they kind of add to it, but, you know, they're not really needed. And um, Scary Stories in the Tell in the Dark, uh, to tell in the, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, which I only compare this to one more time. Um, as I said, the illustrations were a huge part of that. I feel the stories are a little shorter and kind of less descriptive in those books, um, which isn't a bad thing. They're still great, trust me. And, and, you know, they're far more popular than Short and Shivery, I'm sure, where people know about them. And there's even a movie in the works. But, um, yeah, let's see. Let me find my favorite story. Uh, the Deacon's Ghost, that's a good one. There's a, that's another um, story that I've heard several versions of. In fact, Scary Stories in the Hell in the Dark uh, has a version of that called Cold as Clay. It's pretty much the same premise. It's very similar. Um, and in one of these books, there's another version of that story where the uh, chick's driving and she has somebody behind her putting their high beams on and she thinks somebody's after her, but it's really somebody a killer in her back seat. Uh, I think that's in one of these books. I think it might be the second volume, more short and shivery, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but as I said, I'm mostly talking about the first book. I'll get to these other ones maybe in a future video. Um, where is that story? It's called The Midnight Mass of the Dead. Um, I know it's in here somewhere. I'm pretty sure it's in this first one. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, Midnight Mass of the Dead. Um, yeah, there's no illustrations, but it's basically, it's 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 a version of that story where a woman... <coughs> it's planning to go to church. In this case, it's on it's on Christmas Eve. Um, but there's another version of this story in um, one of the uh, scary stories that's tell in the dark. I believe it's more scary stories to tell in the dark. And I think that one's called One Sunday Morning. Um, this one's called The Midnight Mass of the Dead. Uh, so yeah, basically this woman gets up. It's really late at night, but she thinks it's early in the morning, but it's still dark outside. She goes to a church, you know, like a, a church meeting, a sermon, I guess, and the preacher's talking, and then she starts to notice that all the people around her are really old and creepy looking, and she knows, you know, usually in, in every version of the story, she knows uh, somebody she knew before who died uh, years before, she's like, what is she doing here? She's dead, you know, um, and I really love the way this one's, uh, they describe this one, like they describe the ghosts, uh, you know, and then, you know, somebody warns her and says, you don't belong here, get out, this is a midnight mass for the dead, uh, and then they try to, you know, attack her, and then they end up grabbing her coat and tearing it sh to shreds. And in the scary stories of film, the dark version, the coat is found in the cemetery, torn to shreds. But this one, she just goes to the church the next morning, thinking it was a dream, and somebody hands her a torn up coat. Um, yeah, oh god, I love this story so much. It paints such a vivid picture. There's no illustration, so you know it's all, you know, up here. It's all your imagination. You gotta be creative. Um, and I love the way this got the gro the ghost. Let me see if I can find like an excerpt. Um, okay, yeah. The woman on her right had deep circles around her eyes, as though he'd just gotten over some terrible illness. Uh, the man on her left clutched in the back of the pew in front of him with fingers so long and thin they hardly seemed to have any flesh on them at all. I just love that. Um, yeah, and you know the preachers like speaking of death and. Day of Reckoning and stuff, and just all kinds of morbid stuff, and she seems really uncomfortable, and everybody's just, you know, kind of, uh, <laughs> like being, you know, kind of morbid and stuff. But yeah, and somebody finally warns her, says it's a service held by the dead, um, and she tries to get away. Oh, I just love that. I just love that feeling. It seems like, like, it makes me want to go to a, like a midnight, um, <laughs> like a, a church gathering by, you know, um, with a bunch of ghosts. It's just, oh, they need to make that into a movie. It, Oh, I just love that. It's, for some reason, it just gives me such a good feeling. I just love ghost stories. and That's definitely one of my favorites. Definitely my favorite one in this book. Um, the Lovers of Dismal Swamp is another good one. I love uh, stories that take place like in you know places like Louisiana and like uh, swamp areas like the marsh and stuff. Um, yeah, and this is no exception. Um, this one might actually be in Mississippi. I forget where it takes place. 
Um, but yeah, poisonous snakes and everything. Yeah, that's just, oh, this is right up my alley. I'd love to go to Louisiana someday. Um, the Death Waltz, that's another one that I've heard um, a few different variations of. There's several versions of that. The Ghost of Misery Hill. Um, yeah, yeah, some really great drawings in here. Yeah, look at that wolf. Um, yeah, a lot of winter settings, too, I've noticed. And there's all kinds of, um, you know, they're describing the scenery. There's, like, snow on the ground and everything. Um, yeah, lots of that. The Witch Cat. Now, that's another um, story that um, was in one of the scary stories in Tell the Dark books. I think the title of that one was She Was Spitting and Yowling Just Like a Cat, I think. I think that's the one where he gets attacked by a cat and, like, cuts off its paw and it turns into a human hand. Turns out it's a witch. This one's a little, like, uh, extended. This one's, like, a little longer. Uh, this is another one without a drawing, by the way. Um, there's a little more to it. This time the guy's got a daughter and the daughter doesn't like the woman. I think he actually starts dating her before he feels like she finds out she's a witch. Uh, there's a lot more to it. And the other one, I think she was just stealing from the guy and then uh, he figures out it's a witch that's doing it and plots to put it into her. But, um, yeah, definitely check this out if you like uh, scary stories, you like creepy stuff. Um, it's chock full of that. Um, you check out the rest of them. Um, you have more short and shivery. Um, this one's really good, too. Um, yeah, some of my favorite ones in here. Uh, oh, yeah, the Groglin Grange Vampire. Uh, what a title. Yeah, look at that. It's pretty cool. Um, uh and uh, my buddy Spellbinder, who I do my show uh, Dead Level Discussions with, look at those cat eyes, um, I don't know, old woman, uh, he's a huge fan of Short and Shivery too. I think he might have actually done a video about it as well, if I'm not mistaken, he talked a little bit. The Golden Arm, yeah, there's one, that's that's another variation of that same story, like I told about, like, Taily Poe, and then that other one, the Ghost's Cap, or whatever. Oh yeah, look at that, oh yeah, God, yeah, I just love scary stuff, I can't get enough of it. I could, I could read these all day. Um, I love reading them late at night. I get in my uh, little tent that I made in the, the other room, a little tent bed. I hung a bunch of blankets from the top of a bunk bed and made a tent. I get in there and light some candles and read these stories. Really fun. Yeah. There's one in here called Witch Woman. <laughs> Witch Woman. Yeah, by the Eagles. Um, oh, yeah, all these are great. Um, yeah, definitely check them out. I think I already showed you that picture. Um, you know, uh, definitely read them. Yeah, I didn't want to talk too much about any of the stories. I didn't want to give away the endings or anything, but, uh, you know. But, uh, yeah, that's my review of uh, the first Short and Shivery book. Uh, I'll talk about the others a little more in length uh, later on. Um, so, yeah, um, definitely check it out. Um, the Scary Stories are your thing. Uh, there's some great, great ones in there. Um, some really macabre tales. Some twisted uh, stories. Good stuff. Uh, really give you some chills. Really get you in the right creepy mood. Especially Halloween's coming up soon, so you know, definitely gonna put you in the right frame of mind for that. All right, guys. Well, uh, I'm Hellhound, and uh, thank you for watching my show. And uh, long live scary stories. And if you got any good ones, feel free to leave them in the comments be comments below. Um, I'm always in the mood to read scary stories, so uh, let me know if you if you have some. I'm always I'm all for that. All right, guys. Uh, until next time, later.